Welcome to Antitrust Code by Concurrencies. Concurrencies is a leading antitrust database with over 30,000 articles on competition law. Concurrencies is also the largest network of antitrust experts with lawyers, economists, enforcers, and academics in 85 countries. By listening to this podcast, you will learn the fundamentals of competition law and hear about the latest antitrust news thanks to our guest, the best expert in the antitrust world. In today's episode, I am talking with Ferouz Masmidazi about a DMA, digital privacy issue, merge and acquisition, Facebook and Apple. I am Nicolas Chambi, I'm a CEO and founder of Concurrences. Ferouz is a lawyer specialized in European competition law. She has been advising clients in many business sectors, such as chemical products, telecom, financial services, public works, agriculture, and most recently, the media and digital sectors. Ferouz is not only an expert in mainstream business sectors, but she has a knack for new technology. She has been interviewing for Concurrence Review Fabien Curto-Millet, Director of Economics at Google in Los Angeles. She is representing online editors and publishers. She's a partner at Free Law Firm in Paris, a boutique firm specialized in private equity, mergers and acquisition, with recognized expertise in IT and data regulatory matters. So today, Ferouz will be talking about uh, merger, acquisition, uh, DMS, or Digital Market Act, and many other things like the European uh, Community Merger Regulation and the recent cases, Apple and Facebook. Uh, let's start with the first question, Ferouz. There is a systematic debate among competition authorities since several years about how to address killer acquisition and also to adapt a competition law to the challenges of digital. Uh, you mentioned to me that the European Commission just published a new communication on Article 22 of the regulation that for the referral from the state to the European Commission, and that will change everything you say, a lot of things, at least in the digital world. Tell us more, what is this all about? Well, thank you, Nicolas, um, and happy to be to be invited for this uh, this um, session. Um, yes, uh, well, the Commission issued a, a communication uh, about uh, a new doctrine uh, of a referral called Article 22 referrals, um, which basically um, consists in uh, providing the ability to national competition authorities to refer cases which are not even reportable in their own jurisdiction to the commission. Um, and the change is here. Uh, before August 2020, uh, the principle was that a, com a national competition authority could only refer a case where uh, it had a, a, a national jurisdiction over it. Um, now, this has changed because um, the Commission is willing to have an, a, a more global overview of uh, uh, acquisition in particular and killer acquisition in, in, in more specifically, irrespective of the sector concerns. Of course, the digital economy is concerned, but um, uh, biotech also are targeted, pharmaceuticals um, are targeted. And um, the purpose of this is to enable uh, 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 some sort of ex-post control to uh, this acquisition where they are likely to harm um, um, the functioning of a, the competition in the internal market, basically. Okay. Uh, well, that sounds a good idea, but isn't a kind of uncertainty for business? How do will control work in practice? Well, that is certainly um, uh, an issue now that it has changed for, for businesses because um, of course, um, we are uh, striving uh, to, to, to address uh, the issue without much practice. Um, but the Commission issued this, these guidelines uh, precisely um, to, to, to give companies in, in Europe um, some orientation in order to, to self-assess whether or not their case is eligible for a, a, a referral, um, an Article 22 referral. Um, and, and there are two uh, main 
areas where uh, companies may be reassured. First of all, the, the commission invites um, companies to um, make informal approach, uh, either before the commission or national competition authorities, to discuss um, in anticipation of their project, of, their, of the potential eligibility of uh, their case uh, under this new doctrine of Article 22 referrals. Um, so this is a first option companies have and they will of course uh, use it and the second um, limit um, posed by the commission is a, is a temporal limit um, the principle is that the commission would not consider a case eligible if uh, if it is presented more than six months after it became public uh, so there are of course uh, exception to this principle if uh, a transaction for example is extremely likely to harm the, the functioning of the competition in the internal market and, and uh, beyond this uh, timeline of six months, the commission preserves the right to review it. Um, but there is still this uh, principle of, of a six month period, which is rather uh, rational and rather reasonable. So um, these are two uh, elements uh, that should enable companies to be uh, not only reassured, but also um, able to obtain the comfort they might wish to have, and specifically in the next six or 12 months to come, where the commission and companies will need to discuss and, 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 and materialize the doctrine with real cases. I see, I see. But at the same time, so the Commission is proposing a new interpretation because that's what is it about. Huh? The new Article 22 is not a new text, it's a new interpretation, whatever the Commission might say. So a new interpretation of Article 22 and at the same time, the Commission is proposing, uh, Parliament, the DMA. So how do they intend to, to uh, regulate uh, to, uh, the, uh, on the one hand, the Article 22 change and the, the draft of DMA? How is it going to work together? Well, it's it's very interesting uh, indeed. Um, the first uh, point of your question is is um, is fundamental. Uh, the Commission, by this communication, makes a point and 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 stands and states that at the end of the day, competition law is a very agile legislation, and it can adapt itself with a new uh, um, look at many of the challenges of the digital economy some of them may not be fully addressed by it. So this is where the rationale of the DMA comes. Uh, the DMA complements competition law, um, and there is a mechanism at this stage, which is to inform uh, uh, the commission of all the, um, the transactions that are envisaged by those who will be designated gatekeepers. And this information obligation is, is uh, really complementary to the referrals of Article 22, because basically um, uh, here the Commission uh, secures two uh, sources of information, one from the member states them th themselves and one from the companies themselves who are considered the most structuring at European level. So in principle, it should be complementary rather than conflicting or um, otherwise. And in the end, we need to see how the Parliament is going to change the proposal so that uh, the Commission can still change the interpretation of Article 22 depending on the final DMA regulation. Of course. Uh, I understand that the French Competition Authority plays some kind of a role in this uh, change. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, the, the f most of the European competition authorities have uh, debated internally of uh, well, how to address this killer acquisition. Some have, for example, in Germany, uh, benefited from a change in the law. In France, this change did not occur. Uh, but in parallel to the national discussions, of course, there were discussions at European level. And we understand that the French competition authority has pushed um, the, the, the revision of this doctrine uh, regarding the Article 22 referral um, precisely to give more scope to, to, to this review at European level and, and more uh, leverage to national competition authorities in, in reviewing uh, transactions that are of competitive interest. Okay. Uh, so in the same six months, more or less, the Commission is enacting a proposal uh, for new regulation for uh, the uh, digital, the DMA and the DSA. The Commission is also uh, uh, innovating with a new interpretation of Article 22 and also a third uh, change or a news from the Commission. They launch 
a public consultation on reform of merger control procedures. They want to simplify merger notification. Sounds good. Uh, can you tell us about more about this uh, revision of the merger control procedure? Yes, it's well, it's um, it's very much like uh, what the French Competition Authority did uh, two years ago uh, when it modernized uh, its uh, merger control uh, regime. Uh, basically, the, the Commission is trying to to um, reallocate the resources where uh, there is um, the most need. Um, so. The purpose of this public consultation is to assess whether there are there, there are rooms for uh, simplification in terms of procedure um, uh, and typically uh, uh, enabling uh, full uh, electronic notification for simplified cases um, or uh, only an additional copy, um, but also limiting the scope of information required in case of simplified cases. And also in substance, um, the Commission is wondering whether uh, there should be further room for uh, simplified cases, uh, for uh, further uh, uh, definition of uh, simplified uh, uh, transactions. So um, both in substance and in procedure, uh, and, and in terms of procedure, the Commission is trying to um, minimize the, I would say, the percentage of resources allocated to cases which are not um, uh, particularly uh, competitively problematic, uh, not at all, I would say, and um, so as to, 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 to enable these resources to focus on cases which are uh, more likely to pose problems. So it is an, if, it's, it is a, an effort to, to, to be more efficient. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, they look for more efficiencies. There's a, a professional, uh, uh, private practitioners ask for for this uh, for years, especially if you compare the EU and the US uh, merger regulation in practice. I see that those changes uh, take place in a more global context. It seems to me that there is a new uh, comprehension, apprehension from the Commission of the digital economy, but not only the uh, version of market. Uh, I'm thinking about, you know, like a year ago, we had the Aston Siemens case, which was quite a row. And now there is a digit uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis. So do you see this in, in a wider perspective? Well, of course, uh, the Commission is not isolated in this debate, and it is not only a question of uh, self-reform. Uh, uh, um, we, we can see that in the U.S., for example, there is there are lots of changes that are undergoing at least we this is what we can expect from the outside um uh, the recent nomination of lina lina khan at the ftc um uh, and and tim wu also so these are signs uh, globally of a change in in in, in an antitrust enforcement um of course, we cannot say uh, where this will end and to what extent the competition authorities will be convergent in terms of solution. There, there are still different views and 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 between the Europe and U.S., for example, but also Japan, who is very active um, regarding a digital economy. Um, so it is clearly a new era of enforcement, of antitrust enforcement, and uh, a, a global reflection on how to address new challenges. And there are basically two main, um, I would say, tendency. One is to um, have a new look at old rules. Uh, the other one is to create new rules uh, which are specifically dedicated to uh, those challenges of our times. Mm -hmm. And we see that in England, in Europe with the DMA, it's extremely difficult to, to regulate specific practices that we know today with a tool that is supposed to last um, several years uh, long. And uh, so it might be that at the end of the day, we, we have this combination that the Commission is trying to push uh, to put now forward of um, refounding some old rules with a new um, with a new look mm -hmm. to adapt uh, to s where possible to the new challenges, and it only were needed as a complement to have specific targeted rules um, regarding specific problems. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the whole challenge of the DMA, and and where uh, uh, it is the most fragile. It's extremely difficult today to to see where um, the gaps are. Interesting. 
Um, let's turn now to two recent cases. I'd like uh, you tell us more about the uh, Apple case in France, and then we can go to the Facebook, the German Facebook case, if it's okay with you. Yes, of course. The uh, Apple case uh, is about the app tracking transparency tool on iOS 14, and that's a very key case, I would say leading case for the French competition authorities regarding privacy and competition. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, uh, well, Apple, um, well, the French Competition Authority recently rejected interim measures um, against uh, Apple um, regarding this uh, new app tracking tool, um, which is likely to change really the business model of uh, several uh, market player in digital advertising. Uh, it, it really changes their, their, um, their strategy. Um, so basically, why is it important? Uh, this decision is, is, is important at least for four reasons. The first one is because it is the first time that the competition, the French Competition Authority issues a decision on uh, the articulation between privacy and competition law. Uh, it did not have the occasion before uh, to 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 state uh, its its uh, approach, uh, and it's interesting to see that um, this approach, which is rather pragmatic, huh, uh, which relies on on the fact that uh, there is a need to balance the two, of course, and um, and based on the the standard of proof that is uh, um, that results from a long-standing uh, EU uh, decisional practice. Uh, the, the French Competition Authority considered that Apple did not prima facie um, violate competition law only because it decided to um, modify its uh, uh, app, app tracking tool um, and, 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 and also because the, 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 the authority states that even a dominant company and even a gatekeeper, uh, a dominant comp comp company having a gatekeeper role can um, make some changes to, to their product or services and legitimately found this on, on privacy rules, on privacy restriction, and may go beyond what the, the, the law expects from them, basically. Uh, subject, it is not contrary to competition law. And so on, 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 on this uh, em emergency procedure, the, the authority considers that it, it, it is not um, prima facie likely to... to to violate competition law, but uh, reserves the um, ability to 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 investigate more uh, in substance. Another reason why it is important is because it's the first time also that the French competition authorities mentions the 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 word gate gatekeeper mentions the um, the situation where. A dominant company on one market may be a gatekeeper where it is not dominant on another market and assess um, the relationship between the two and the dependency of uh, operators uh, uh, in relation to this role. Um, and this is, well, one might think, and I think that it is a form of statement that the, the competition authorities, national competition authorities, have also a role and are entitled to... Um, to examine this aspect, and it is not only a question of the potential future digital market act, it is also a question of competitive interests mm -hmm. and maybe of competition law also. So mm -hmm. um, for these two reasons, it's interesting. And it's also interesting, of course, because uh, this is a way for the competition authority to, to make its approach public regarding mm. the way we could regulate big techs, the way uh, competition authorities and privacy authorities may cooperate in a very um, tight uh, procedure in terms of timing. Um, it is a statement that basically authorities have the resources, both legally and uh, in terms of um, timing, to, to, to review mm. uh, very difficult challenges of the digital economy in very tight uh, deadlines. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking that uh, um, Apple is big, French Commission is big, but one is bigger than the other one. What I mean here is that uh, a decision concerning Apple in France is important in Europe, but how is there a need for regulation or coordination between the authorities? What does he say about coordination between agencies in Europe and worldwide? I don't know if you hear me now. I hear you very well, uh, Feroz. You got, okay. You hear me? Yeah, you can go. Um, 
Okay, so uh, yes, there is of course a need of cooperation, a, a high need of cooperation, and it is true also that um, there might be a room of improvement in the DMA to uh, open a role for national competition authorities who are sometimes better placed than the Commission uh, to identify uh, issues um, and refer them to the Commission uh, if applicable and relevant. So, um, of course, uh, cooperation is essential. And in this case, in the Apple case, it's interesting to see that um, the French competition authorities and the CNIL, uh, the, the privacy uh, um, agency uh, in France, uh, have cooperated fruitfully um, to assess uh, to what extent the um, changes undertaken by uh, Apple are likely or not to deviate from the privacy rules, at least from a, from a, a French law perspective. So this is a very interesting um, proof of um, a fruitful cooperation and um, an ability uh, of national competition authority to resolve issue um, quickly. And efficiently, somehow, even if it's not in the benefit for the moment of uh, of uh, online advertisers. But anyway, in substance, it, this is what's in, it, it, very interesting. Speaking about cooperation or lack of cooperation between agencies, let's now turn to Facebook and Germany. So there is this famous case, uh, Facebook in Germany. A decision from the Bundeskartellamt, decision from the Apple Court, decision from the Supreme Court, and now there is another case the, on the same case, another decision. The Regional Court of Dusseldorf decided to stay the proceedings and request a preliminary ruling uh, to the European uh, Court of Justice. Uh, as usual, Germany is at the forefront of changes in the European legal landscape. I uh, think about Fidera case concerning damages, but here, it's a case on privacy arguments and Facebook is in the middle of the storm. What are the stakes of this uh, decision still to come? Well, this this uh, preliminary ruling ha have, has a lot of stakes and it's absolutely uh, fascinating to see how German uh, um, Germans are uh, effectively at the forefront of, of our questions uh, and how they enable um, changes. Um, the question basically from what we know now uh, posed to the Court of Justice is whether a company can abuse its dominant position by violating uh, the GDPR. Um, in substance, we understand this is uh, the, the, the point. So um, basically here, the, the, um, the Facebook case uh, is likely to preempt what we are trying to cope with the DMA uh, um, because the, well, the Court of Justice will have to, to, to issue a decision and will have to, to um, interpret mm -hmm. European law as if it was always how we need to interpret it. Uh, this mm -hmm. is basically the purpose of preliminary ruling. So um, uh, when, when the Court of Justice will decide whether a violation of GDPR is is able to to um, characterize a, an abuse it's going to be structuring for all the competition authorities in europe it's going to be structural for the dma also because the dma uh, is without prejudice to national and european competition law so if the court of justice decides that um, uh, a violation of GDPR may be a competition law problem, then it's going to be very difficult to articulate the rules in the dma and the national competition rules for example at least we will need to take this into account and define another way if needed, if uh, the parliament and the trilogue will, will it. But if if um, if the DMA stays at, as it is, then there is a risk of conflict or at least a risk of inefficiency of the DMA itself because mm -hmm. the scope of competition law might be extremely extended to s somehow. So um, the stakes are extremely high, and it's very interesting that the German uh, court has uh, referred this um, this question now, um, as we expect that the DMA will, in any case, not be adopted before one year at least. So um, it might be enough for the court to 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 rule on this, and um, and it's going to have a lot of implication. I think it's a fascinating case. Uh, we had a trilogue. 
uh, the Council, the Parliament, the Commission. Now the Court of Justice is entering by uh, the window or corner of the room as a debate, even if it's going to read to only on GDPR and this uh, privacy case uh, in Germany. Uh, this could have some impact on the DMA negotiation. And then there is a Buddhist cattle on one side, the French Commission authorities, and many other authorities. What a fascinating topic in the coming months or coming year. Well, Firuz, thank you very much for your insightful uh, views on this. This is now for the Antitrust News Briefing by Concurrence Review. Our guest today uh, was Feroz Masmi Dazi, and uh, thank you to a firm, Free Associates. You listen to an episode of Antitrust Code by Concurrences. If you want to read more about this topic, check the Concurrences website, where you can find all relevant articles. Follow us on Twitter at Competition Laws, and join the Concurrences group on LinkedIn to receive updates on our next podcast.